your food yet? I paid for it, why? It's not such a big deal. Right? Yes, it is a big deal. Oh my gosh, there's such a lack of green consumerism awareness in Singapore. Green consumerism? What's that? Let's find out. Green consumerism. It is the practice of purchasing products which are regarded as environmentally responsible. It is the act of environmentally conscious consumerism, such as recycling and purchasing all organic chemical free products. There can be many types of green consumers. As I identified by Jacqueline Ottman in 2010, there are the resource conservers, the health fanatics, the animal lovers, the outdoor enthusiasts. Singapore is widely known as one of the world's greener city, our garden city. However, environmentally damaging consumer behaviours are rampant among Singapore's consumers. About 2.5 billion, yes billion, plastic bags are used in Singapore every year. 151 litres. That's how much water an average Singaporean uses in a day. According to the FAO, Singapore used 431,000 metric tons of paper in 2015, meaning the average Singaporean used 78 kg of paper that year. More than 790,000 tons of food waste was generated in Singapore in 2015. So how does all this affect us? So it seems our consumer habits have a pretty dire effect on the environment. But are we Singaporeans aware of this? How much do Singaporeans know about green consumerism? Question 1. On a scale of 1 to 10, how serious do you think environmental issues are? 6 to 7, because right now like, people are actually starting to do stuff, uh, starting to be more aware about environmental issues. Question 2. Do you think that environmental issues affect Singapore? Yeah, I guess. Plus, it's like a global thing. Because Singapore's like a coastal island, so we have like coastal levels that slowly like all of them are getting Question 3. How about your daily life? Honestly, if you ask me daily to daily life, I don't think it affects me personally. La. It's a long term thing, right? So, I, won't call, I probably won't see the effect until like much, much later. This is getting hotter. Uh, I mean, before that, global warming has something to do with human happiness. Uh, it's not natural, mutually exclusive, it's actually quite good. Question 4. What comes to mind when you think of green behaviours? Netflix. Oh yeah, the supermarket, right? You don't use the plastic bag, right? They bring their own bag, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Question 5. Do you think that you are a green person? Someone? 
thing, yes, I actually uh, separate recyclable items from those things that I think can be recycled. Question 6. Do you practice green consumer behaviours, such as recycling, switching off appliances, and not wasting food? Yeah, the reason that we're doing for it, do it is not really for green. Maybe not Question 7. How often do you practice green behaviours and why? Every day, uh, like you switch off the lights every day, right? Of course, uh. This is a habit, right? You switch off the light every day. You use it and we are not using it. It's bad to waste resources. Question 8. What do you look out for when purchasing a product? Everything else, but you probably wouldn't care about whether it's. So sometimes some things are not recyclable. So it ends. Yeah, but try to. Actually not really. It's not uh, really that my own priority. It's, I would consider uh, price more uh, instead Question 9. How much more are you willing to pay for recyclable products? 10 cents, 20 cents or more? But if it's like 10 cents for everything in my house, then probably not. So, How yeah. about 20 cents? I'll do my own. Yeah, I guess. Uh, How about 20 cents? I think it depends on uh, like, how Question 10. Do you think Singaporeans carry out green behaviours? Uh, maybe not really. It's because it's quite inconvenient. Recycling bins are not like everywhere. You don't see them as often as customers. So, if you have something that can be recycled, but you don't see a recycling bin, but you see a dustbin, you just throw it in the dustbin. So it seems that most of us do not know much about green consumerism or only practice it when it's needed of us. There's so much more that can be done. Consumers are living in a so-called Instagram world where 83% of Singaporeans will only buy fruit and vegetables that look fresh and 25% will never eat so-called ugly food. As a result, businesses throw away this so-called ugly food Supermarkets like NTUC sells this so-called ugly food at a cheaper price, which helped to reduce food wastage by nearly 40% from 2.2 million kg in 2014 to 1.3 million kg in 2015. Singapore has become a green city over the past years from government-initiated measures implemented for green infrastructure, such as the BCA's Green Mark Award and the Singapore Green Labelling Scheme. We also have many groups for the cause, such as the People's Movement to Stop Haze, the Repair Kopitiam, Zero Waste SG, Zero Waste Heroes, and the Journey to Zero Waste Life in Singapore, which started with only five members in 2016, and has now more than 900 members in just one year. Selling less aesthetically pleasing food at a cheaper price aims directly at the problem of food wastage. However, is it really that easy to change the choices of the consumers with all the purchasing power? Consumers can start 
by reducing usage of plastic bags and the use of takeaway boxes by supporting the Bring Your Own Bag initiatives. They can reduce food wastage by requesting for only what they need. They can also switch to public transport or cycling initiatives such as O-Bike. Singaporeans could also reduce paper wastage by using recycled paper or writing on both sides of the paper or even drawing a line in the middle of the paper to maximise its usage. Purchasing pre-loved products could also reduce the need for new products which will greatly relieve the strain that producing them places on the environment. These actions may seem small, but they are all steps towards making green consumerism possible in Singapore. Let's see how Jordan, a 20-year-old Singaporean student, practices green consumerism in her daily life. So actually the production of meat is a lot more energy and water intensive than producing like fruits and veggies. So depending on the region and stuff like that, um, actually like the production of like maybe like one gram of protein or meat or one gram of like a soy based protein, it can like uh, amount to like 15 times the amount of fossil fuel use or like 15 times the amount of water use. So that is just one aspect of it. Um, other aspects include how like meat production is actually the leading cause of like deforestation and pollution, like land, water, air pollution because of like the animal waste and produce and actually the chemicals that are used to like produce, I mean to like kind of uh, rear the animals and to like kill slaughter them yeah, yeah. and to like, pr like yeah, process them and transport them and everything. Yeah, and yeah, so like in that sense like you can do a lot by cutting our meat intake and yeah, not using animal byproducts. So um, I really want to encourage people to like just like you know reduce. I mean like sometimes people go like meatless Mondays or they like maybe like every lunch they like don't eat meat. So like really every bit helps like you just cut down. And after a while honestly like when you taste like how good vegan food is like sometimes you're like yeah I don't even need meat anymore like I can I'm just chill with like all the and yeah. And I think like a huge thing for Singaporeans that food must taste good, you know, like no one wants to eat like this. Like seriously, there's this huge misconception that all oh, vegans eat is like salad or like you're just eating like rabbit or grass. But then I'm like, um, excuse me, you know, like there's a lot of good food out there. Zero waste lifestyle, zero food left. And the good thing about having your own cup of potato is that yeah, I can, since I couldn't finish my food, I can actually bring it back and share it with my family. Let's introduce the green consumer segmentation that we have come up with. Level zero consumers have no idea what green consumerism is and neither do they care. Level one consumers are aware of green consumerism but do not practice it in their daily lives. Level two consumers practice green consumerism but not frequently. Level three consumers practice green consumerism in their daily lives and also make an effort to promote it amongst their fellow consumers. Let's all aim to be level 3 consumers! Woo!